Okay, let's do some lighting equation stuff. Here's our plane. And remember, we need the surface normals. We now have the surface normal data. I'm going to pick on this vertex right here. We need a light. And the light is simply a position. It's not like a light bulb. If we're doing a surface light, then we got to think about those things. But we're not doing a surface light. We're doing a point light. And the light is simply a position. Where in space is the light? So we'll just start out with the light up in the y direction. Maybe, I don't know, I'm guessing that's 0 in the x, uh, 3 in the y, 0 in the z. So we'll start with a light position of 0, 3, 0. We have the surface normals. In fact, I'm going to pick on this vertex right here instead. Here's the surface normal. We'll get a vector to the light, a normalized vector. We do the dot product. That gives us the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. And that is how bright we want that vertex to be. It is literally as simple as that. And the nice thing about graphics hardware is that graphics hardware is built specifically to rock at linear algebra operations such as the dot product and things like that. And so. This should be pretty, hopefully, straightforward. We need to go to our shader. Actually, we need to set up a light position. I guess I'll just slam it in here and paint GL. We'll say GLM VEC 3 light position. And 0 in the X, 3, oops, 3. And the Y, 0 in the Z. I'll say Z and type F at the same time. That's our light position, and then in the vertex shader code, we have our ambient light amount that we're not really using anymore, but we'll, we'll bring this back in later. I'm going to leave that there. I'll say uniform vec, unisform, uniform vec3 light position. I can send our light position in as a uniform. So let's see, gl get uniform location. That's the ambient light. We'll do the exact same thing down here. In fact, I'll be dirty and just copy and paste all this code. Copy, paste. I'll say light position here. Ambient light amount is a VEC3, and so is the light position. So I'll grab light position. We have ambient light there. I guess I'll control L that and paste that right there just to be consistent with the variable, how we put it there for ambient light. We'll put the variable there for light position. And then this is going to be light position, uniform position, uniform location. Copy that, paste that there, and then pass in our light position as our uniform. And we should be good to go. So we just sent the light position into the vertex shader code. We have the light position. Now remember we need that vector that points to the light. I'll just illustrate this right here in 2D. If this is our light position, and this is our surface, and this is the vertex we're trying to color or shade. We have a surface normal. We need a vector that points to the light. And the way we get that vector that points to the light is by subtracting the light position from the vertex position. That'll give me this vector here. But then I need that vector normalized down to length 1 so that all I get out of the dot product is the cosine of the angle between them. So let's, let's do that. We'll say GLM or not GLM, <laughs> this is shader code. VEC3 comes for free. VEC3 light vector gets normalized, I believe that's how we do it. Normalize, subtract from the light position. We want to subtract the position of this vertex. So we normalize that vector. We got the light vector. We have the surface normal. And then all we have to do is say, hey, take the vertex color and times that by the result of dotting the light vector with the surface normal. And recall that this now, since these are both length 1, the dot product will simply pop out the cosine of value from negative 1 to 1. And we're scaling the color by that amount, and we should be good to go. Let me clear that off. Hopefully I did all this right. Control F5, build that run that and hopefully you can kind of see it hopefully you can kind of see it in fact let's just drop the vertex color and we'll just go hey the color gets the dot result of that i'm not sure if that'll build actually yeah it's gonna say oh, I, I can't convert a float to a vec3 and so let's come in here and say float brightness because that's what it is the 
There's all the dot product there is the brightness that we want that vertex to be. And then the color gets vec3 uh, brightness. 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 So we're going to have the ex exact same amount of brightness for the R, the G, and the B. Control F5, build that, run that. Ah, oh, that looks nice. That looks nice. Can you see that nice white light in the center? of the plane. Let me back out a little bit become more apparent. Oh, that, f that far plane in our view direction is cutting off the end there. But Let me uh, see if I can... Ah, there we go. I had to move my mouse off the screen real fast. And it's nice and bright here. Our light's sitting roughly up here somewhere. So it's nice and bright directly below our light. But the further we get out, it gets darker and darker and darker. In fact, we can really illustrate this by putting the light closer to the plane. I'll go back here and say light position is at 1. It's not as high off, high up off the plane. Build that run there. You can see our nice tight light there. But you can also see another issue. Okay, we're, we're getting a, a faceted look there. Faceted, faceted, is that how they say that? Where you can see, you can still see the vertices. Okay, it's, it's not a nice smooth plane. It's this rough looking plane. You can still see the checkerboardness. You can still see the vertices. And that's because we're calculating the light on a per vertex basis. Quite common uh, if you want to save some time. Remember the vertex shader runs a lot less than the fragment shader. And so if we have some complicated lighting equations we want to run that less and less and so you can put it in the vertex shader and you'll run that a lot less than running it every single fragment but then it doesn't look as good. And it looks kind of choppy there and so actually I can show you in my demo let me bring up that other demo I showed you in previous videos here's my demo I showed you in previous videos and let me move our light over this direction and you can see we're getting that fa faucet I believe faucet is the right look the Epcot ball the ball outside of the Epcot Center you can see our triangles essentially it's not as nice as we'd like it to be it's not as smooth but but the way we fix that up is by eating up some expense and calculating our lighting in the fragment shader instead of the vertex shader when we calculate the lighting in the fragment shader. It looks a lot better. It's just more expensive because we have to run those equations for every single fragment and not just for a few vertices. However, graphics hardware is getting pretty awesome these days and so yes, that's a cost, but it's a cost we can afford. If you notice, I have a checkbox here that determines whether I'm running the lighting equations in the fragment shader or in the vertex shader. Right now I'm running the lighting equation in the fragment sh or in the vertex shader, but if I click this it'll go to the fragment shader. And as I click that, pay attention to how much better it looks down here by pushing the lighting to the fragment shader. I'll click. Ah, nice and smooth. We can see that nice that's specular light right there. This is our diffuse. This is the one we just did in this video. This is specular. But either way, it looks a lot smoother by running the lighting equations in the fragment shader. Vertex shader, fragment shader. Vertex shader, you see the squarish look, the faucet look. Fragment shader, ah, nice and smooth. And you can see the gradient come out here. Ah, oh, that's like it's going to be worth writing our lighting equations in the fragment shader. So guess what? That's what we're going to do in the next video.